Let's catch up with Dr Peter Collignon now from the Australian National University. He's the infectious diseases physician and microbiologist. Uh, good to catch up with you again, Peter, via Skype now from your Canberra home. We've uh, caught up with you last month a couple of times. Uh, really keen to get uh, your up-to-the-minute assessment of where we are with this pandemic uh, in Australia. How, how do you feel with how, how well we've managed it so far? Well, I think reasonably well, but obviously it could be done better. Your example of the cruise ship is, is one such example. The most important thing we have to do is for those people who have infection, we've got to keep them away from others. We need to quarantine them. Those at high risk of getting infection, and that's contacts of people with known infections, those from high risk areas, which is mainly all return travellers, they need to be quarantined in their own home or away from other people and basically um, wait to make sure after the full incubation period they haven't developed the infection. Now, the now, research that I, men I mentioned earlier, uh, the American research that suggests the virus can live on surfaces for 17 days, how unusual is that for this sort of virus? Uh, what sort of challenges does that present in terms of making, uh, you know, pre pre preventing cross-infections? Well, a lot of viruses can um, survive on surfaces for quite a while because, um, and it depends on the dryness, the temperature, a whole lot of things like that. If you're out in the sunshine and ultraviolet light, it probably kills them very quickly. But for any infection, be it influenza, the common cold virus, that is why your hands are so important. Because what we think is people cough and sneeze, or even if they're asymptomatic, touch their nose and touch something, we come along a few hours later, touch it, we touch our nose, our eyes and our mouth, and probably that's a lot of transmission of infection. So our hands are critical. Hand washing is very important. Social distancing is as well, but so is cleaning of surfaces. So if there are any viruses there, we get rid of them. Um, detergent, a lot of common household products will both physically remove the virus and probably kill it. So what uh, is your assessment also of the mortality rate? The rates of uh, critical care and uh, the mortality rate in Australia are extremely low. Uh, contrast that to Italy, where they're extremely high. Um, are we in the early stages here, or, 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 should, or should we be encouraged that we might be able to keep it this low? Well, I think we should be encouraged. If you look at Korea, their um, mortality rate is about 0.8%, I think, on the latest, day, latest data I saw. Ours is actually lower. That may be a function that we're relatively early and we've done a lot more testing because of the hundreds of, about 100,000 tests we've done, less than, you know, overall less than 1% are, are probably positive at this stage or more. Now, that's a low rate uh, that had been before. It might go up. Even in Korea, it was over about 3%. Now, this may change over the next two weeks. The biggest risk for new disease is still people who've come back from overseas because they reflect what was happening in the communities in the US, in Europe. Um, and, for instance, if 1% of those people have an infection, um, I presume over a million people have come back, maybe even 2 million. So we're talking about 10 or 20,000 people, uh, potentially. And that'll ramp up over the next week or two because we can then see a doubling every five days because that's the incubation period on average of what actually happens. And then if those people transmit it to their close contacts, you know, another five days for getting more. Well, so that... I think we'll see more, but um, eventually I think it'll plateau off if the things we do are working. In other words, keeping people quarantined who've got infection, people, people quarantined at a high risk of getting it, social distancing will make all the difference, along with hand wash, hand hygiene and all those common sense practices. Keep away if you're sick, whatever you've got, keep away from people who are sick. Now, the other part of this American research that was incredibly sobering was the fact that uh, half of the people who tested positive uh, for the disease were asymptomatic and, and many of them went on not to even suffer symptoms. So you can have up to a fifth of all people infected never actually uh, suffer any symptoms, yet of course they would be spreading the disease. Well, that again, we don't know how much disease they spread. Because if you're asymptomatic, we still don't believe you're breathing this in to any extent and getting it from them. What you're probably getting it is because they might touch their nose and touch a bench and you touch it that way. Or else if you're intimate with them, I guess, and kissing, that might be another way of getting it. But still relatively, while they're important because you don't know them, 
as a percentage of the uh, infections at the moment, they're probably a small percentage. They're not zero, they are contributing. But again, what protection have we got against that? We've got washing our hands, social distancing that we need to do. All right, well, we keep doing that. Now, uh, it's been noticeable, of course, with government messaging changing and lockdowns coming in place over the past four or five days, uh, people's behaviour has been noticeably different. Uh, people, you, you see fewer people out in public and in the streets and in the workplaces. Uh, but it will take, uh, what, a week, two weeks before you see any benefit from that behavioural change reflected in the numbers, wouldn't it? Well, I think there's two issues. If you're looking at deaths as an endpoint, the people who are most at risk are those over the age of 70, particularly if they've got underlying heart disease, even high blood pressure. And they're the ones that particularly need to social distance. They need to stay at home as much as possible, not use public transport that's crowded or probably at all. Even the supermarket, get somebody else to shop for you. Um, keep limited contact with your family, but only those who are well and maybe some neighbours because we don't social isolation, if this goes on for six months, is going to be a major feature. But you can, if you decrease your contacts from 150 to, say, 10, that significantly decreases your risk, particularly in your own home. You control the environment. You can clean it. You can limit who can come. And, you know, if you do something in your backyard, you know, you sit in the sunshine with one or two other people, that probably protects you a lot more because those surfaces, if they're in the sun, ultraviolet light would kill any virus that might be put there in even low numbers. Just finally, uh, Doctor, if I could ask you just to give us a bit of an explanation of the duration here. I think there was a lot of misinformation early on, people suggesting we might better sort of lock down and fix this in a couple of weeks. The Prime Minister talks about six months. Can you give us your best estimate of how long a country like Australia is going to have to have pretty uh, severe social distancing in place and explain why? Well, I think it's probably going to be, have to be in place till September or even October. And the reason for that is I think we'll keep on seeing a rush of numbers. It'll probably double and maybe even quadruple over the next few weeks as these return visitors come and we'll get some local spread. But then I think it'll come down. Um, and I think we've got an advantage probably because we've got relatively a lot of testing and can find these, but also our warmer weather. But come June, July, when we go into winter, Unless every last virus in Australia has been exterminated, which is unlikely, um, we will then probably see an increase of cases again. And in winter, it's much more likely to transmit everything from the common cold virus to influenza. So I think we'll see this coming back again, hopefully in lower numbers than what we'll have seen already, because we presume we'll have less people that might have the virus and we'll hit it easier and harder because we'll have more testing and we'll be more suspicious. But that won't disappear, that risk, till September. The risk may well be there until either a lot of us get it and are immune uh, and luckily have mostly have had mild disease or else we get a vaccine. But a vaccine is probably at least 18 months away, if not two years away, before we have billions of doses of a vaccine that we know is safe and works. Peter, thanks so much for joining us. OK, thank you.